This is my homemade 2 by 72 inch tilting belt grinder. It's designed to serve as either a vertical or a horizontal grinder, so there's a hinge down the middle. And it's also designed to be very heavy duty, so it doesn't chatter or vibrate, and it should last a very long time. But probably more importantly, it's designed to be modular, so I can replace the attachment with whatever I come up with. I can replace tables and jigs to make it better and more versatile over time. And today I'm gonna to tackle the most commonly requested of all of those attachments. This is a 10 inch smooth contact wheel made by Ameribraid. I don't know if it's any good. I think it's just kind of a cheap import one. Contact wheels are good for hollow grinding blades. So I think you can see there on my knife blade, the surface is concave. You need a convex surface to grind that concave blade. These are also really good for efficient grinding. With a platen, the belt is sliding over the platen surface and that wastes a lot of energy in friction. It turns a lot of energy into heat instead of that energy being available to grind. Here the wheel is turning with the belt, so you're not losing hardly any energy to friction. This is also rubber coated, and the rubber helps to absorb inconsistent thicknesses in the belt, including the seam in the belt. But with all of that said, I've never used one of these, so I'm just relaying information I found online. I'll know at the end of this video if all that's true. And if you're wondering about making contact wheels yourself, if you know how to coat a wheel like this with rubber in such a way that it lasts and it doesn't fly off at high RPM, then more power to you. I have no idea how I'd do that. This machine is designed to take up to a 10 inch contact wheel. I've been asked a few times and no, it cannot take a 12 inch. The attachment that I'm gonna build right now can be used with either an eight or a 10 inch wheel. And it can take some smaller ones, but it takes a little bit different attachment. So why would I have limited this to a 10 inch wheel? I know some of you are gonna to wanna to use 12 inch wheels. What it comes down to is the things that can fit within the perimeter of this belt. We obviously have the drive wheel, the tracking wheel, and this wheel. But also within the perimeter, with my design, the hinges are in here. In order to even just use a 12 inch wheel, the front hinge would have to be moved back almost four inches. That would put the two hinges only about eight inches apart. That's not enough. The force of grinding, pushing down on the table and up on the wheel, that transfers into these hinges. Everything needs to be able to take this, not only without breaking, but without even flexing a tiny, tiny bit. It has to be rock solid or else it's gonna chatter and vibrate. So I guess this was a really dumb idea to put the hinge within the perimeter of the belt, wasn't it? I could have just put it over here. Let's just visualize what would have happened if I had put the hinge over here to the side. When I tilt the grinder, the wheel would move up and over to approximately this position. Now I would have to move this table up and over as well. And that would take either a complex mechanism or a whole new table, either of which is gonna be harder to make and have more chance of errors. So compare that to the system that I have now where the wheel actually tilts in place. The same table can be used to accommodate both positions of the grinding surface and in most cases I don't even need to adjust the table height. And this is true of all attachments. It works the same way with the platen, small wheel attachment, whatever I make for this. With the design discussion out of the way, let's get started on this build. There's not a whole lot to the attachment really. There's just a bar that fits in this tube and then a fork that holds the wheel. So I'm gonna use this piece of inch and a half bar as the tool arm. So by putting the wheel in here, I can mark where it comes to. You can see here, we're gonna be limited by this bolt head for how far back this wheel can go. So that's why there's this much area to be able to connect the bar to the fork. So I'm gonna cut this off at that angle that I marked from the wheel. I'm just gonna make a straight cut. I'm not gonna to try to make it concave. This is about eight inches long. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna use that. So now I just need to make the sides that'll connect the axle to the tool arm. So these two plates go on either side of the wheel to create a fork that'll hold the wheel. These are eight inches long on the long side and I cut this end at 25 degrees. Now I'm gonna drill a hole right here for the axle and then round this end around that hole. This is a one half inch hole matching the one half inch bore in the contact wheel. So I made sure to drill this hole perfectly centered on this width and just a little bit further down from the top edge than it is from these edges. Now I can snap the appropriate pin into my radius jig and I can round that end over.
So I've got the two sides of the fork done. Now this just simply needs to be attached to that bar. Actually not so simply because that's a lot easier said than done. See if the wheel is off like this or like this, it's not going to track correctly. And I don't want to make massive adjustments to the tracking wheel every time I change between attachments. So I need to get this in just the right spot. And I'm not sure if I actually can get it in just the right spot. So instead of spending way too much time trying to get this all lined up right and still ending up with it not being right, I'm just going to put an adjustment on the end of this bolt. That way I don't have to get it perfect. Because remember, if you can't make it perfect, at least make it adjustable. But we'll get to making that adjustment later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and try to weld this fork together. And just because I'm making this adjustable doesn't mean I shouldn't at least try to make it perfect. So I'm going to do my best to put this together straight. So here I have the parts set up approximately how they'll go. I've got a washer on either side of this two inch wide wheel, which means I have about two and a quarter inch between the two sides of the fork. And since this is an inch and a half, that means I have a three eighths gap on either side of the bar that I need to fill. So the spacers that I came up with are simply some pieces of three eighths by inch and a half flat bar. And they're cut to the same shape as that area that I shaded in earlier, except they're a little bit shorter because there needs to be a weld in here and I need room for that fillet. So now I'll just weld those spacers onto the bar and then I'll weld the sides of the fork onto the spacers. Yeah, I'm going to try to weld inch and a half solid square bar with 150 amp welder. The problem here is that this little welder might not have enough power to get this bar hot enough for the weld to penetrate well. And if it doesn't, then it could break later. Of course, you could also try to preheat the bar. I don't have a good way to do that, so I'm just going to bevel out these areas and I'll try to use all the knowledge I have about how to get a strong weld and hope for the best. So now we have these V-notches to weld in all the way around. So I'll try to fill these up with weld, maybe even heap them a little bit. And that should be pretty strong then. Last side, I'm doing this in the vise again so that I can get the orientation correct so that gravity works in my favor. I'm really going to be shocked if that ever breaks. I think it'll be fine. So now we have to determine where the sides of the fork go. What we really care about here is where the wheel ends up. It doesn't matter what angle this fork is on, as long as the wheel ends up in the right spot. I'm just going to jig it up so that this bolt is in the right spot, and then I can just slip the fork onto the bolt, and then the fork will be the right spot. In order for the wheel to correctly tilt in place, this bolt, which serves as the wheel's axle, needs to be in the same plane as these bolts that serve as the hinge of the grinder. The height off of this bar to the center of the hinge is an inch and five eighths, so I need to make sure that the height from this bar to the center of this axle is also an inch and five eighths. Setting the bolt to the right height isn't too big a deal. I just need to overhang a piece of wood like this. This is an inch and three eighths. So then when you add the quarter inch radius of the bolt, you're left with an inch and five eighths. So I just need to clamp everything down just like this. Based on this mark, which is the radius of the wheel, I can determine where this needs to be positioned. I need this to be about 3 16 inch from the end of this just to be sure the wheel doesn't rub. And then kind of figure out the rotational position that'll work best for welding that on. And now I can go ahead and customize this piece to fit. So I'm going to cut the bottom of it off like this and then I'll bevel all the edges and weld it on. It's a good idea to take a ruler and check the width between the two sides of the fork to be sure they are parallel. Also make sure that the bolt is perpendicular to the tool arm. That way you make sure that the wheel isn't going to be crooked, so it should track correctly. 
Although again, I am gonna be making this adjustable, but I wanna do my best to make it perfect first. Ready to weld this up. Now, unlike last time, I'm not gonna be able to just weld all around them. I'm gonna to have to tack weld and then remove these wooden parts so that I can gain access to everything. I see a problem. I totally should have seen this coming, but those warped together a little. Welding the inside of these caused the inside of these forks to shrink, so they're about an eighth inch closer together than they're supposed to be. So I'm just gonna try to force these apart. Oh, that made a little difference. I'll make that little adjuster thing next, but first, I want to see how well I did. So I'm going to put the belt on and see if it tracks right. It's working, just tracking about a quarter inch off center. Now, if I hook reverse, so that would be almost good enough. I'd like it a little better though, so I am going to go ahead and make the adjustment regardless. So the first step here will be to drill out this hole so that the bolt can wobble around in there. So now the hole in the right side is 9 16 so the bolt fits loosely, while the hole in the left side is still a half inch, so the bolt fits tight. And that allows me to move just the left end, effectively tilting the bolt. Now this by itself might almost be enough. I could potentially just tighten this bolt down really tight, and if I had it in the right spot, it probably wouldn't ever move. But, like I mentioned earlier, this attachment is capable of taking either an 8 or a 10 inch wheel, and in the future, I might want to switch between those using the same fork. So that would mean any time that I would take this bolt out, I would completely lose my adjustment. I don't want that to happen, I want my adjustment to be permanent. So, I'm gonna set up a little flange on this end, that way I can just set it once and leave it forever. So what I just finished making is basically just a two inch diameter washer with exactly a half inch hole in it. You might be able to use an off the shelf washer, but it's important that it fits tight on the bolt. If it fits loose, that kind of defeats the purpose. So that fits like so. This flange can be moved around to adjust the tracking. And when I get it in the right spot, I'm gonna use four little quarter inch bolts into here to tighten that in place. That way, if I need to remove this bolt to change wheels, I don't lose my tracking setup. So I marked out the four quadrants where these little bolts will go to hold this onto the fork. I'm going to center punch these and then drill them. I've got this oriented how I want it and I've made sure it's perfectly concentric. So now I can go ahead and use the 5 16 drill to transfer these hole locations. Then I'll take this off and drill and tap the holes. I'm using this piece of square tube so that I'm supporting this side directly. The other side of the fork is just hanging in there. And now I'll just tap these quarter 20 for those little bolts that'll hold the flange on. I'm confident enough that this is gonna work that I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. I'm not gonna paint the bar though because maybe interfere with the fit. These little bits of wood will keep the paint from getting in the threads. All right, time for some assembly. I lost the audio for this clip, but basically I'm just using the platen attachment, running it in forward and reverse to establish a benchmark for where it tracks correctly. Then I switched back to the contact wheel attachment, and I was able to tweak the tracking until I got it to track correctly both forward and reverse with that attachment. 
Through this whole process, I never used the tracking on the grinder. I only adjusted the tracking of the attachment. Of course, the grinder's tracking can be used, but I want it to be right without using that. It's kind of satisfying when you can switch between two different attachments and run the belt in either direction, and it still tracks perfectly without ever touching this tracking adjuster. Not that that's necessary, it's fine to adjust this. But this wheel does need to track close enough to perfect that with any belt, it will be within the range of this adjustment. Every belt tracks a little different, so when you switch between belts, if this is too far off, then I might find myself really cranking this down to try to get it to track right, and if it doesn't yet, if this doesn't have enough range, that's a big problem. So it's important that this tracks at least that close. And by making it just fully adjustable, well, I think it is kind of cool to have it just track perfect every time. This is a lightly used 50 grit belt. I'm gonna run it at full speed, and this is some 10 gauge steel. It's a little over eighth inch thick. And I'm gonna play this video back at actual speed so you can see how fast it grinds this away. I've mentioned in previous videos how this machine bogs down, being only one and a half horsepower. But with this contact wheel, it uses that one and a half horsepower extremely efficiently. I wasn't able to get this to bog down at all. A lot of you have asked me if I'm gonna make knives now that I have a belt grinder. And I have a feeling that now I'm gonna get that question even more. I didn't build this grinder for knife making. I built it just for general metal work. But I will most likely make at least one knife because I gotta try it. If I do, I'm definitely gonna try to make the knife right. I'm not gonna go grinding it out of a wrench or something. I'll use real knife steels and try to make a real knife. This won't turn into a knife making channel though. I might make a few here and there. So I think that's it from me here. If you want a SketchUp model of this attachment, I will put one on my website, link down in the description. Let me know in the comments if you want just a PDF step-by-step -step instruction. I'm hoping I put enough detail on the video that I don't have to make a set of plans because they're a real pain to make. But if I get enough requests for it, I'll do it. Thank you for watching. I'm just playing around. <laughs>